Well, folks, welcome back to part two. And once again, we are here at Motorsports of KC, and we are with Brad Harrison. And we're talking about Brad's career in the speed shop business. <laughs> just something a little bit different. And we had left off just in part one where you and your brother had just bought the business. Uh, Motorsports of KC is pretty much known as a circle track speed shop. But uh, you guys are way more than that. You're involved in a lot of other racing sports also. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what some of those are? Yeah, you know, I mean, I know people get that impression when they walk in here, and part of it's because they see the, the racing springs and shocks they relate to circle track racing. But we have a lot of drag racers. We, uh, we have a lot of sand racers. We have mud mud runners. Mm -hmm. um, we have pullers. We have boat racers. We have a lot of guys that are just working on their street rods and their street machines, right. uh, and then we have we have guys that are just rebuilding their engines to yeah. to, to keep the, their tow vehicles going too. So yeah. I mean, uh, it's pretty well rounded. It just doesn't show as much as some of the other things we do. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this: Is that a, a business decision? Because when you say that, it sounds like to me it gives you the opportunity to have a more well-rounded business with all of these other types of racing too. Well, I'm interested in all of them. I like any kind of racing. I mean, it's a good thing I don't have a, uh, all the channels at home or I'd probably never get anything done either because I can, <laughs> I can watch them all. Um, and I like to get out the track. We try to get it to at least one track a, a weekend and sometimes two. Um, but I do. I like them all. And, and you don't determine who walks in the door. I mean, that's just our customers coming in looking for help, and we try to help them. And sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Uh, um, we don't do a whole lot of import business that just um, I guess maybe because it hasn't been a big interest of mine or you know it, it's this industry is kind of divided up uh, you have your truck businesses you have your import businesses you have your race uh, businesses and there's tire and wheel people so I don't know that it, I don't know that you could actually do it do everything for everybody I, I don't know you'd have to have a lot of people uh, and a big operation in order to do that, yeah. and that's not us. I was gonna, that's not us. I was going to say, it sounds like a lot of it is you guys' reputation bring in the customer. You know, we honestly, we don't do, we do very little advertising, mm -hmm. um, and that's not necessarily a smart move, but it's just kind of the way it's gone um, because we can stir up a lot of things that we don't really handle. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I, we, we have a real good customer base. Um, a lot of loyal customers uh, and we it's amazing how many new customers a day we get too so um, it's it's worked out okay here we go with a good question i like this one <laughs> which sells more parts is it where racers come in where parts are being broken or is it new parts in other words items that are new on the market and I don't know, I wouldn't say through word of mouth, but racers find out about something new and man, you know, everybody's got to have the latest thing. Which sells more of them? Well, there's, there's a lot of both. I'm saying probably new items because uh, the racer, no matter what he's racing, is always looking for an edge, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's horsepower, or suspension or whatever it is. Um, you know, there's a misconception by a lot of people that look at our business and, and think of the circle track business and figure, well, man, you guys, you can't wait for them to race. They can go out and wreck stuff and come back up and buy it. Well, my customers are a whole lot happier when they come in mon on Monday morning and they're looking for something new, not having to replace something that yeah. got bent and broken. And I've learned a long time ago that racers basically are going to race. You know, they're, they change their habits a little bit during economies and stuff, but they're still going to race, and they're a whole lot happier when they're buying something new to try. And, and you know, uh, about the only thing that can hurt our uh, business to a big extent is the rain because they don't get to go out and test anything. You know, I don't need I don't need my customers to break stuff. I just need them to, to continue to race. Yeah. Well, so. and if you think of frame of mind, uh, I know I would be in a much better frame of mind if I was coming in looking to buy something that's going to make me faster rather than replacing something that I broke the week before. So well, you, you're, you're kind of getting them on the right edge. Well, yeah, you know, and, and, and they, racers have a certain amount of money they're going to spend, and, and if they didn't break something, they're going to be looking for something to make them go faster. Right, so. okay. Uh, how in the world does a speed shop keep up with all of the technology that is coming out today? I mean, gosh, I, I would have to think that uh, there's stuff on the market all the time, and 
how do you guys get educated about that and keep up with it? Well, we have publications that come in here, and I try to read as many of those as we can. We all do. Um, and each of us, um, my son works here now too, Bobby does, and uh, he's kind of interested in the truck, and he's taking care of a lot of our mud runners. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Barry has his clientele of customers that uh, go to him, and it's funny because during the years we've had a lot, I shouldn't say a lot. We've probably had about 10 or 12 different people work here. And each of us has a, has a different personality, and, and the customer finds the salesman, I guess, that, mm -hmm. that fits his needs the most. And it's always kind of even now. But as far as keeping up with new products, uh, your customers come in and tell you about stuff that they're looking for that they've seen. Mm -hmm. And they're probably as good a source as any because they are out there digging in, in all the, the mm -hmm. publications. We have uh, industry trade shows a couple times a year that uh, – um, when I can, I get to, but um, a lot of times I re rely on salesmen at my suppliers to keep me informed on new products, and and they have flyers that they send out to you. So there's a lot of different ways, but I, I imagine the guy walking in the front door asking for something is probably your best shot at keeping yeah. up to date. Okay. Does Motorsports of KC sponsor any race cars? We don't. And um, it's kind of been one of those deals. When we were part of uh, Midwest Motorsports a long time ago, they did sponsor quite a few race cars out of the Iowa store. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, I've actually uh, had a customer several years ago get mad at me because I, I wouldn't sponsor a race car. Not because I wouldn't sponsor his, but just because I wouldn't sponsor a race car. But, you know, I try to put myself on the other side of the counter every now and then and look at it from my customer's point of view and I, I don't know that I'd really want to go in and spend money with somebody who's trying to help beat me with one of their own house cars mm -hmm. you know I, I understand that you have to learn and, and stay up to date and everything but um, I think there's other ways of doing it and I've just I you know there's a lot of good racers out there and they all deserve sponsorship and I can't sponsor them all so uh, I've decided to just rather than stir up a hornet's nest yeah. I've stayed out of it I can understand I uh, I like to call it kind of staying neutral. <laughs> well, yeah, and in and, and that respect, I honestly, I probably shouldn't say this because it'll probably bite me, but, you know, I honestly feel I can go to most any racetrack and, and walk up to most anybody in any trailer, mm -hmm. and they don't have any problem with me being there. I'm not, I'm not spying, you know, or mm -hmm. seeing what the setup is or uh -huh. doing all that. I just, you know, I, I think they, I have, a, I think we have pretty well mutual respect for, yeah. for all of our customers and Right. Well, and, and something you mentioned on the phone, you try to keep the prices low so every racer can you know, have that price. I try to treat everybody the same. You know, there was some grandfather's deals in from the old Midwest Motorsports days, but, uh, you know, I, I one customer is, is just as valuable to me as the next, right. and I can't treat, treat them differently. Exactly. So. Well, I mean, you can't in business. It comes back and bites you every time. I think and. it would. But. Okay, here's the loaded question for today. <laughs> <laughs> um, your business has direct ties to all of the tracks pretty much in the Kansas City area. Uh, the decisions that track owners make as far as competition on their tracks reflects right back into your sales and into the racers' pocketbooks. And I know, uh, Brad, that you've got some strong feelings about this because you were telling me something about them. But uh, is racing headed down a road to self-destruction? Or is there something that can be done to keep the cost from getting too high? Well, a lot of people don't like a, a big rule book. But unfortunately, I think that the, the rules, the people enforcing the rules, and I honestly believe the promoters are going to control the destiny of, of racing, whether it's sand dragging or circle track or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. you basically you have to prevent people from spending too much money on some things. I mean, this is a sport. These are sportsman racers. Some of them have have some really nice sponsors but the majority of them are paying for this out of their pocket it's a hobby and uh, if if the promoters don't do something about controlling the costs mm -hmm. um, they'll be losing racers mm -hmm. you know and I need new racers uh -huh. uh, I don't need the guy to wreck his car I need new racers coming along okay. for our business we're getting down to 30 seconds Brad I hate to cut you short on that because I know there's a lot more you could say because we talked about it but uh, I know you've got some people that you'd like to thank that's kind of helped you through the years and all of the business you know, primarily the customers we've had that have continued. I've got customers here that have been coming to ever since the store opened, mm -hmm. you know, and luckily they've stayed in racing. Mm -hmm. um, our family puts up with a lot, but uh, primarily uh, family and customers. Uh, and customers.